What is up, everybody? Welcome. This is Lore Forge, the podcast for Ashes of Creation. It's episode 32. We're trying to figure out if we can say straight drip or no cap, like all the kids say. We're just going to go ahead and throw out our age there. Anyway, we're your hosts. I'm Jibs. <laughs> I'm joined by the Italian Stallion from SoCal, hey. California. Oh my god, I can't believe yes. you pulled that gem out. I've been waiting all week for that. <laughs> <laughs> I've been dreading that all week. And and the um the uh consensus on the no cap thing is that absolutely not. No. Okay. Mm. I get enough of that in this house with a 20-year-old daughter. You know, like she, dude, she she will walk around the house and if something good happens, like if I do something good. She'll go like, oh, my God, slay girl boss. What? Slay girl boss. Slay girl boss. Like all one, like that's all one phrase or is it like, are we talking three? Three different no, ones? No, it's like a, it's like a full phrase. I still don't know if it's like an insult, <laughs> like a, like a passive aggressiveness. Well, it's better than what I thought, because I thought I would like when you said sleigh girl boss, I was thinking of like a girl like riding like a sleigh like Santa that's in charge of the reindeer. So, no, yeah. it's it's more like uh, a, a, a a something has entered your your being that you need to conquer and you have conquered it. So mm. you have slayed it. And then I guess the rest of it is just the fact that I. I guess I'm a girl boss. So, does, does anybody remember in early 2000s when saying tight was the cool thing to say? Oh, big fan. Like, oh, that's tight. Big fan. Yes. I remember Tuco in um, Breaking Bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. He would right. say, <laughs> when he would say tight. <laughs> tight, that's tight, 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 tight. <laughs> As he's completely tweaking out on the map. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the uh, best. The best, most the purest. purest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. And you heard him here first. We do not condone use of methamphetamines <laughs> on Lore Forged. It's true. We don't. Thank don't you. do drugs, kids. I'm not a crook. All right. Anyway, so uh, Sonny's here. Did you have a Nixon in there? For was it he the one who just to relate on drugs? to the kids? No, no, I <laughs> wasn't. to relate to the youth with a Nixon <laughs> reference there? I'm pretty sure in the first five seconds, we've already established what our demographic yeah. is. <laughs> yeah, no. No who was it that did the war on drugs? It wasn't Nixon. It was uh, no, that, that was Reagan. Reagan, Reagan that's and that right. was specifically Nancy, Reagan's wife. Yes, Nancy Reagan. Nancy, Nancy Reagan. Oh, yeah. All right. Nixon so, was the war on uh, confidence in the American presidential office. Oh, okay, <laughs> got it. Yes. <laughs> and I'm a Canadian, so I mean, I'm only loosely understanding this. So oh, you know, I tell you what, if you want to listen to an audio drama, go listen to Wondery's. Uh, Watergate series. Amazing. Oh, I'll bet it's great. You Wondery does it. fantastic oh, stuff. They're fantastic. Oh, yeah. Such good stuff. Anyway, gosh, I feel like we could just keep wrapping on and talking the talking the stuff for hours. But anyway, gentlemen, what have you been doing this week in gaming? Let's start with you, Sonny. I have been playing Foundation. Um, I've been doing the stream. The stream has been actually going quite well during the days. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to stream on days that I'm not working. You can't really stream on days that you are working. True. Fire service sort of frowns on that. Um, but on days that I'm not working, I've been streaming and talking ashes and playing a game called Foundation. And it is like a medieval city builder in the style of a game called Banished. Banished sort of developed the whole genre. And I build a little medieval... Uh, village and it's fun because the people that come into the stream i will name a character in the village after them and then they walk around and they they get like a job and something like that and so ezekiel is all excited because he was a cheese maker in my village now here is my, one of my favorite things that happened today is that ezekiel said and i kid you not i have no idea if this is actually true or not because i do not know but it seemed true he said this makes me feel so good because I lost my job as a cheesemaker like six months ago, and now I get to be a cheesemaker in your game. I did not, like, there are like a hundred jobs in this game, and I just picked this guy to be a cheesemaker, and I made dreams happen. <laughs> Sonny, look, look at you, man, just shining light upon people. I just love it. Dude. Unbelievable, right? Like And the, putting him to work for free with free labor. Oh, I mean, free labor. Look, the cheese has got to be made. All right. Oh, that's yes. good. Yes. 
Oh, that's good. Cash, I believe you've been visiting the wonderful world of the dogma. Uh, yes, I have. Uh, I've had a, a very busy work week. Um, I just have had a lot, lot going on. So when I've been home, I've been really trying hard to get our my next video finished um and it's a it's a lore video so it was a pretty heavy edit a pretty heavy edit and i was really racing to get it done because i wanted it done by today which it was i was successful in getting it done by yesterday so that i could load up and play dragon's dogma 2 um and pretty excited to have that game come out among the other games that we've been playing we've been playing a ton and we'll kind of let you go through that in a second, Jibs. But um, so I'm about four or five hours into Dragon's Dogma 2, and it took a little getting used to right off the bat, but that is a damn good game. So really? Far, yes. And um, I watched a lot of like the preview stuff on it. I was very excited about it. Now that I know it, I know that it's out, like people are really screaming and whining about some of the optimization stuff. And I have seen zero issues and have been very happy Good. with it so far. It is a super deep game with super deep systems, although the combat is relatively simple. So um, it's, there's just a lot to it. So I'm really, really looking forward to kind of diving into that game amongst others. Yeah. Jibs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've been doing some... Uh... A little bit of everything it feels like. I feel like this week's been a low gaming week, but higher on the content creation and real life working. <laughs> uh, but when I have, uh, when we uh, have been gaming together, it's been uh, Fallout seventy six. We're picking that up as a community during the Steam Spring Sale. Um, so we've been doing some of that. I feel like there's been something else in there that I'm missing. But you had to run it in shrouded for a hot minute. Yeah, that one didn't. Uh, it was quick. It was quick. It was quick. Yeah. yeah. In fact, everybody who's here who try. who picked that up, I'm pretty sure we played less than three hours. So if required, go ahead and ask for Steam your Steam refund. And you'll probably get it. But uh, yeah, you know it's uh, it was definitely Fallout 76. I've been really clamoring for number one MMO. Like I'm I'm like floating around like crazy, you know, wishing I was in ashes and uh, dreaming that I'm in ashes. But you know, it's uh, so I'm like, all right, well, nothing's really gonna. Nothing's really going to give me that fix unless it's ashes. So <laughs> um, I've been doing just some RPG stuff and having a good time with it. Yeah, we, uh, we've we been in Fallout 76 and, you know, exploring. Every now and then we kill bugs. Every now and then we kill bugs. Yes. Yes. yes chat's true. asking about that. And that is, um, uh, I, I haven't had a whole lot of game time this week. And if there is one game that I'm really itching to keep playing, it is Helldivers for sure. It's fantastic been very very good and you know like mm -hmm. I, I do want to say this to you like we try a lot of games yeah and i i always feel bad for for our friends because our friends will like see us playing a couple games playing a game or two and then they'll they'll dive in uh grab the game and then it just doesn't stick for us <laughs> so <laughs> we always hate um causing people money. Always, i would say give it like a following two weeks. if we're still doing it after two weeks you know, you're Dive in a good spot. It. Come, come play with us. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I do want to mention this, though. Look what we got. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mine's oh, upstairs yes. in the wash. We got our glasses. Yeah. Those are so cool. So I don't yeah. know if we Thank actually talked about this on the episode or if it was on Stay the Owl. I think it was. I, well, oh, that's a great question. It was on Did the it, episode. It oh, had was it? to have been on the episode. It was on the episode. Yes. Okay. All right, cool. Yes. All right, well, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in again. This is Lower Forge. We're stoked to have you here with us. This week on the episode, we are answering mail. Dun, dun, dun. Mail bag is back. It is full. We're answering your questions, and we're talking details in the next dev update. And we're polishing it off with a cold glass of dev discussion on, and I'm realizing now mid-sentence I did not update that, but anyway, it is, nope. <laughs> it's not a dev discussion. It is a roundtable discussion on server merges so gentlemen we're going to go ahead and open this up here with the mailbag this is from axeman he says hey gentlemen with being a father now last week's podcast about time equals experience got me thinking about gaming in real life and how much people dedicate themselves to playing mmos with being long-term mmo players yourselves how has being a gamer evolved 
or changed you being a father and a husband over the 20 years? When did you start to involve them in gaming, MMO, or non-MMO? What would be your golden piece of father advice that you have learned in your journey? Now, I can we can really go to two different spots here. Do you want the cliff notes or the full chapter? So I think we'll go ahead and knock the full chapter out. Cash, you're up first. What do you got? <laughs> oh, you know when you say stuff like that, you make me just want to talk for like four seconds and then just throw it to Sonny for all of his gems. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to answer each one of these questions as if they were read off to me one at a time, and I'm going to give myself 10 seconds on each one. How's that? Wow. Can you do it in a limerick? <laughs> <laughs> I was going for the haiku, but... Well, okay. okay. <laughs> I would accept haiku. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, Axe is a new father. Totally understand it. Uh, definitely been there. And I have gone through the myriad of... Uh, I guess getting in trouble and doing it right and getting in trouble again and doing it right with my wife over the years. And, you know, my daughter's, she's a little older now. She's 20. Um, so it really has changed my gaming stuff a lot, especially when the kiddo was smaller, obviously more time is going to be required to dad. And like the overarching thing here is that gaming is a hobby. Um, although it's therapy for a lot of us, for sure. It, is absolutely can never come in front of your family. Like you just can't let it do that. There's been too many uh, families broken up because of stuff like this. And like, that's the serious side of it. And talk about, you know, games that have actually broken up marriages. Um, you see games like, uh, like um, World of Warcraft that has really, truly broken up marriages just because of the, the addiction to gaming. So you really got to tailor it and you always have to put the importance of your family first have i been perfect at it no i screw it up all the time um but the important thing is like i have little little rules whereas if my wife gets home from work i would say like 98 percent of the time like unless i'm in a dungeon or something and like completely locked in i hear that door open my wife's home from work i'm up and out and welcoming her home i just screwed this up last week we had a huge argument over it and she was just nice and quiet about it. She was super sweet about it. But she was right. And I was in the middle of a freaking Helldivers mission. You know how those are, my friends. If you're in a Helldivers mission, it's very difficult to just get up and walk away. You're going to die. You're going to let your team down. Like, I didn't want to do that. But in hindsight, probably should have done that because mama came home. She's usually cool about it, but it, she, had, she had a really rough day. She just needed to talk to me. So anyway, I still screwed up all the time. So your kids and your spouse comes first. If if your wife needs help, get your butt up and get out there and help your wife, help your spouse and just do those things. Um, it does it does really change. It really it really does change when you have kids. Um, now, the, now that mine's older, I still try and stick to some of those rules. But if I do have that one piece of golden father advice, it is absolutely do, do not ever put the game in front of your family. Ever. Can't do it. It's not worth it. Be a good dad. Be a good mom. Mm, that's good. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't have a child quite as old as you. Um, I had grand aspirations like we all do when we are uh new fathers and things like that. And you know, all the different games that I'm gonna play with him and everything like that. And uh I found that it was difficult. I found that um, the, uh, that our gaming styles were very different. I would play some games with him as he was growing up. Uh, we like to do some cooperative games and things like that. But by the time um, that really developed, he had friends. And so now um, he plays with his friends specifically on the console. That was one of the things that really kind of separated us was that I was largely a PC gamer that had a console and he and all of his friends grew up as console gamers and not PC gamers. And so it was, it was pretty different. Um, we still play every now and then uh, games together for fun. We did some stuff with Sea of Thieves that was really good and everything like that. But um, it was, uh, it was an interesting thing. I would say that um, one of the most, one of the most difficult things for me was there was a period in my life when I 
wanted to try streaming. I was in between the law firm and a legal job that I had after the law firm, after I'd left the firm and I'd sort of decided that I wanted to get into the fire service, but I hadn't quite pulled the trigger yet. I, I had a period of like three months where I uh, wasn't working and, um, and so I just decided to stream. And that was incredibly hard on the family. <laughs> it was just a really bad situation. Like I was trying to stream. I was getting into this thing. I felt like I had to be streaming all the time. Um, I was in a spot in the house where it disrupted everybody else and they couldn't do what they wanted to do. And I couldn't really do what I wanted to do. And it was, it was incredibly difficult and awkward. And it really ruined streaming for me for a very, very long time. Only now recently have I gotten back into streaming and it's a totally different world now. Kelly's, you know, working from home and I'm um, streaming in these blocks in the afternoon when H is at school and, and nobody minds and it's fine and, and everyone does their thing and it's actually working out quite well. But I think that the, the end result to this story is that no matter what your big plans are for something like this, you just kind of got to feel it out and then feel what's working and what's not working. What's working for your family, what's working for the relationship between you and your kid. How can you make gaming fun and still, you know, not turn your kid into like something that, that you don't want, right? Like kids are kids. They, they do need exercise. They do need to go outside. They need to get energy out of them. Um, you're different. You are a 40 year old man. <laughs> you have different needs and desires and you work a day and then come home and want to relax. Right? So it's all, it's all this balancing act of trying to get these things to work. So just, just see what works and, and you'll know, um, it doesn't mean that you can't try these things. It just means that like, don't have your, don't have your mind made up on what this is going to be before it happens. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's very true. I do kind of a little bit of both of what you do. One, number one, anytime my wife comes home, I'm up unlocking the door. I'm opening the door. And I'm greeting her as she walks in. That always just goes a long way. It's something that I know she personally loves and enjoys. Um, but uh, what Sonny said as well, and that is, uh, basically learning the dynamic of your home. Like what's that? Everybody's home, like the vibe and the atmosphere where everyone's involved at what that looks like. It's different. You know, for, for us, my little man now is a PC gamer. And so behind this curtain uh, where we're, I'm recording is my wife's computer that I bought her and my son's computer. And we're all in this, in this room and we'll game and do all this stuff. But really it took a long time to get to that. And that, it, uh, but before that ever was thing, it was learning the dynamic. Like what, when is it a good time? When is it not a good time? When do you need to sacrifice what you want to, you know, to make sure that you're being seen, that sort of thing. Um, I come from the mentality and the mindset of family always first, hundred percent. Don't care if I'm in a game. I've left many hell diver. Um, I'm bringing this up. Not, not because you brought it up cash, but I remember distinctly last, last time I was playing hell divers, I I think I told the squad I was leaving. I just left. My wife came home. Groceries needed to be carried in. I'm outie. Like, I'll be back. Yeah, I remember that. It was bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> and we so, died. We died. <laughs> Appreciate it. And so, yeah, I came back and, you know, jumped right back in and no one said a word. I'm like, oh, yep. All right. <laughs> I mean, that, that was fine and all, but you didn't have to drop a nuke on us on the way out. I mean, that was just a... Or super Earth. Earth. Jerk move. <laughs> <laughs> Dropped a five hondo, right? Hey, you guys might want to run from that red beam. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, uh, go. <laughs> the one part that I, I didn't answer was um, was the fact of, or, about whether or not my family games. Um, my daughter does. My daughter is a gamer, um, although now she's in a she's in a program she's really been trying to get into in school, so she doesn't have a whole lot of time to game. But she is a gamer through and through. Um, she's more of a like an FPS type gamer she likes that she likes horror games and stuff like that my wife on the other hand no way no how not a gamer she would rather get involved in other ways um if you saw my last baron chef video then you saw the little tribute i did to my wife like right at the beginning uh because she's she's super helpful with like like this stuff like the set like she helped me you know build the wall uh, wall paneling in this room and all the cool little things if there's something that looks cool back here it's her She's really, really good at uh, at that kind of stuff. But what 
I did do is I like to bring her into games as much as I can. So Sunny, like you'll probably like this. I know that when you build characters, you like to have your wife come in and help you build a character because you play female characters, right? So exactly. in Dragon's Dogma, you get these companions called pawns and you get to design your main companion. So I just decided out of the blue, I am going to design my companion as my wife. I'm, I'm going to name it her name. I'm going to make it look like her and do the, the full thing. So I'm sitting in here early this morning and my wife comes in. She goes, morning, baby. How are you? I go, um, who does that look like? And she looks at it, she's like, oh my God, it looks like me. Because like, it is you. <laughs> you are going to be my companion in this game. And she's like, what? So she's helping me do the hair and like get everything right. And I even gave her, they have like a brash personality. Oh. So, <laughs> so, this, so this companion is just chirping at me the whole time. <laughs> I'm playing the game. It's awesome. You got the character to look so right that she saw it and said, that looks like me. Yeah, that's another. I don't want to like completely gush about this game, but the character creator in this game, I think, is is pretty amazing. It's very in depth. It feels very ashes. Wow. Yeah, how in depth this thing is. So, that's awesome. Yeah, it's a good game. That's pretty impressive. Fun. That that's mm -hmm. really impressive. Huh. I mean, I just think of like the the Warcraft uh, original Warcraft character Oof. creator, where you have like. <laughs> Golden face models. Yeah. Who does that look yeah. like? Yeah, I, I got nothing. <laughs> that looks like the guy <laughs> got <laughs> ran over. Look at that face. <laughs> you could be a potato or you could be a potato. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Not well. in this game, man. You got tattoos and all kinds of slider sliders. sliders. A lot of slide. Dangerous, dangerous <laughs> a things. A lot of sliders. Is there a yellow flag somewhere around here? <laughs> oh. Sliders are always dangerous <laughs> be careful with that especially if you're a game a gamer yeah and if they're a teenager yep. anyway so axman thank you so much for the email you can always call us to everyone who is here at 516-875-1776 get your voicemail on the show or the mailback segment or of course you can always email us loreforcehq at gmail.com gentlemen next development live stream announced now this coming to us from the official ashes of creation forums and it goes like this. The next live stream featuring an Alpha 2 fighter archetype preview will be happening Friday, the 29th, 2024 at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. EST. Make sure and don't forget, this is a quick note and reminder to everybody here. Make sure you submit your questions that you want Stephen to answer on the forum post. Limit yourself to one per person. Yeah, I think it's right verbiage. But anyway, so yeah, we're going to be seeing the fighter archetype for alpha two guys which is kind of something that i i don't think we've really chatted to too much here on the show so that'll be fun then but until then what do you guys want to see sonny what what stands out to you as uh you know when it comes to this fighter archetype yeah fighters are kind of one of those things that have just never really been my style um i did play a warrior once in warcraft because i just wanted to try it um it, whenever i look at a game and try to figure out what i'm going to do i spend a lot of time reading the little almost it's like a tool tip but it's basically the description of the class and, and what they do and like what what they're all about and inherently, fighter is always one of the least attractive ones to me by definition, which is run into battle, usually wear pretty heavy armor, and just go crazy, right? <laughs> That's like close combat, <laughs> crazy fighting and uh and and to me, I'm always like, well, ah, you know that sounds like fun, but you know there's probably something better and it, I'm always attracted to the rogue. I'm sometimes attracted to the hunter or the ranger or something like that. This bard situation is fascinating to me. Fighter to me is just kind of one of those things that it just doesn't, um, it doesn't really trip my trigger, but I will say this. The fact that they're calling it fighter is truly D and D. And I, I really like that because I think that this hits directly on a lot of people's game loop. It is, this is what they're excited about. This is what they're going to see. And they are just going to go right into this. And frankly, there is a wide, wide history of how to create this type of character. And, you know, even though it's not my jam, I would almost feel like it doesn't make any sense if you 
had an MMO without like a fighter type of character, like you just need them. You need them in every party. You need them all the time. Uh, they are, they are what people play. So I don't know, Cash, or have you ever played a, like a fighter type of character and really stuck with it? No, you know what? For, uh, for me, it's always pretty much been like ranged characters or the closest I'll come to a fighter or, or a warrior type character is a rogue. Um, and it's, it's kind of, it's kind of funny because the fighter type character, or, you know, you like a barbarian or like a berserker type character is like the classic Viking type fighter character for any RPG. And it's just never like that up, you know, up close and personal thing um, has never really been my jam. Although I am, I mean, obviously it's like every single archetype in class I'm really looking forward to, to seeing, especially the, um, the fighter doesn't seem to have a whole lot of stuff fleshed out yet. The fighter type class. I think there's, there's only a couple. And like one of the, one of the biggest things about a, a fighter, regardless of whether or not you're like a tank type fighter or just like a, a DPS or damage type fighter is the, the gap closer. You know, the gap closer is always yes. something that that they have, um, you know, warriors and Warcraft have it. And you look at pretty much any fighter type archetype in, a, in an RPG and they all have some type of a close the gap quickly type thing because that's how they do their damage. Um, I love it when like there's a there's like a, a rush ability or a gap closer. And as soon as they get there, they stun. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool. So. I'm looking forward to seeing some of the skills kind of fleshed out. And you look at the things that they've done with the, the mage and the ranger archetype. And they like really fleshed those out. Like they went through so many skills on those things. So for a lot of folks who play up close and personal, this is going to be a really, really big deal. Um, to finally have them go through the skills. Like if you look at the wiki for the fighter, there really is only two skills or abilities that are that show up um, that are known right now. And that's the rush and the whirlwind ability. Um, so I think this is going to be a big one for a lot of people who play that type of class. JB, are you have you played a fighter? I know you've played I know you've played warriors in Warcraft before. I mean, was that something that felt right to you? Not really. It was fun. It was like that. It was like that that meme where you're that guy's walking with that girl and he just looks around and he looks behind his shoulder and just like, Ooh, <laughs> like that. That's really what that is for me. And it's typically like over a weekend or a week. Um, the last time I was in an MMO that was really into a fighter was a paladin. And that was in the shadowlands era of, of Warcraft. And truthfully, I kind of, I look back on it and think, man, I wish I'd never had started another character after that. I just stayed with that one. But I honestly can say like that that's, I enjoy melee because, again, it's kind of like that fun weekend, quote unquote, fling. And again, in an MMO, like that, I can just go and have fun and whatever. But I'm much more of a ranged person. I think the last time I was truthfully, honestly, into playing a fighting character goes all the way back to when I was playing Gauntlet on in the arcade. Oh, like as Gauntlet. a like a, I forget if it was Barbarian or Berserker, but like that was the last time Barbarian. I can say that like I was full on for a fighter. Um, but Weren't yeah, we just talking about gauntlet the other day. Yeah, dude, we played it. Man, we played on steam. Oh, they had a re -release. yeah, they like had a re-release yeah. of gauntlet. In Nation yeah, like, days. yeah, probably God, it must've been about 10 years ago now. And we, oh, uh, yeah. we got keys and we, we played it. No, <laughs> wait a minute. You just minute. called something the other day, 10 years ago. <laughs> Is that what we well, were talking about? It feels like the other day. About this, like the other day. <laughs> no, 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 no. We were we were talking about Gauntlet. I think we were looking we were looking through Steam. We were looking for, through games. Yeah, for MMOs Gauntlet. to play. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> we were. We, really we didn't were. find any. Just no. in case anybody was wondering. No. No. <laughs> yeah. The genre is in desperate need of ashes. It's so it's in need of. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. Um. I believe it was a barbarian. Gauntlet was so so good. Yeah. So I played a I played a warrior with Mortal Strike, which I found actually kind of fun. I played that for quite a while because I don't I don't roll alts. So if I change characters, like it's, I'm either gonna like get rid of it right away or I'm going to stick with it for months and months and months and months. And I did. And I played a warrior for quite a while with mortal strike. And it was a very simple concept. Like 
charge in, get Mortal Strike, which is a debuff on the bad guy, and then let other people do work. And your job is just stay as close as you humanly can and keep Mortal Strike on whoever the target was. And that was fun. And and I like like the simplicity of some of those things. Um, it, I did like being kind of beefy, but honestly, like, correct me if I'm wrong here. If I'm going to go to the extent of putting on heavy armor and everything like that, wouldn't you rather just learn how to be a tank? Like, wouldn't that just be a more fun thing for you? I'm actually really mm -hmm. glad you said that. I forgot that I played a tank in SWOTOR. That was my main, it was a melee class. I forgot all about that. And I still have them to this day. And I will say, yes, throwing your weight around as a tank, whether it's PvP, PvE, doesn't matter. It is so much fun. So much fun, especially when deal damage. And see, and see, when I think of when I think of fighter, I when I, first of all, when I think of tank, it sounds so effing boring to me. It does, really? and like that is not meant as an insult to any tanks out there, because you are loved, you are appreciated. <laughs> yes, let me validate and you. You are quick. supported. <laughs> I want you to know this from the bottom of of my black little heart. But for myself, no, nah, man, I can't do it. It's it's so effing boring. <laughs> Just, when I think of a, when I think of a fighter that is uh, that could go like either way. You could go to the DPS realm, or you could go into into the uh, sword and board. I would much rather, if I had to take my pick, I would much rather play like a two sword dual wielding um, berserker type viking character with like maybe medium armor who's just jumping into the fray with this bloodlust and just doing a ton of damage that's that's how i would would want to play a fighter if i was going to yeah um as opposed to the, to the other route yeah all the tanks hate me now probably have you seen some of the names for the fighter classes uh gonna, not recently no i'm gonna read you some <laughs> yeah. of these okay here. yeah what you got they are they are good. I'm okay. Let's play a game. Let's play a game. I'm gonna read you the name, and you're gonna tell me the secondary class. Oh, oh there's zero. There's chance yeah. This any is of these. Okay. Yep. <laughs> so uh, just just for refresher here, I'm just gonna read you real quick the secondary classes that are available: ranger, rogue, mage, fighter, cleric, tank, bard, summoner. Okay. That's just a refresher. Those are your eight classes. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, All of these help. are. Are, <laughs> I'm gonna suck gonna write this it down. so bad. Uh, we did this before and we sucked so bad at it. Yeah, we're we're not good at this. Um, no. <laughs> okay, so all of these are primary fighter, and then the secondary. Uh, when you pick a secondary that is a different class, or frankly, the one time that you get the double double, right? The fighter fighter, you get a uh, you get a name. And so here we go. Are you ready for this? Yeah. No. Here we go. Blade color. Uh, that that's a that's a summoner and fighter. It is a fighter summoner. Oh, it is a fighter summoner. One for Check one. out the big brain on jibs. Yeah, well, Look it fits my that. massive no, skull. That. I had to wear custom hats. Okay. Continue, Cash. I'm gonna give you an easy one here since JB's but JB's one and zero here. Are you so ready? Screwed up. Yep. Shadow blade. Oh, pff. come on. Fighter rogue. Nope, you're wrong. Yep. It's ranger. It's, it's not. Hey, it's it was really my not. turn. Oh, you shut your it's mouth really when not. it's my turn. Okay, we'll give. We'll give uh, we'll, this one's a little tougher. High sword. I just picture Bob Marley. Um, let's see. <laughs> with a sword? What? No, he said high sword. I'm I just no thought. fight with sword. <laughs> All right. Um, fighter bard. Incorrect. Cash, would you like to steal? <laughs> High sword. Uh, I'm going to... I oh got it. Spell blade would be like a f mage fighter. I want to say... No looking at the chat, by the way. The chat is cheating for you. No looking I'm not, at the chat. I'm not, I can't look at the website either because I, ha I have things yep. pulled up, so I'm not looking at it. Um, I'm going to say fighter mage. And it is fighter cleric. High sword. Ah, uh, yeah, because they smoke a lot of weed, so that yep. makes sense. That does make That's why I said sense. Bob Marley. Look at me like I'm an idiot when I say I that. And you, you go there I like it's thought, nothing. No woman, no cry. Yeah! <laughs> you know what I thought right off the bat? I thought, I thought, oh my God, is that an elven fighter? Because they're so uh, sweet. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. High elf. Well done. Well done. Okay. Yeah. 
We're going to go back to, no, we're going to go cash first on this one. Stupid. Blade Dancer. <laughs> There's a lot of blade references in these, I think. Blade Dancer. Blade Dancer Fighter Bard. Fighter Bard. Got it. Got Fighter one. Bard. There you go. Okay, okay, let's see. I will take uh I will take um uh <laughs> hang on a second. Hang on, I want to pick a category. Well, we, I'm gonna take we got one um, category. <laughs> cleric weed for 800 Alex. Right. This long bottom leaf found in the Riverlands. <laughs> This is a direct theft from another IP. <laughs> okay. JB. Yes. Dreadnought. Oh, that's that's Tank Tank. No. Remember, we're still doing fighters. Fighter <laughs> so Tank. Fighter Tank. Fighter Tank. Okay, yep. there you go. Totally what Dreadnought meant. is, in fact, Fighter Tank. There you go. Um, Cash. I'm Hunter. still here. Hunter. That's the whole name. Hunter. Oh my gosh. Um, okay. Hunter's gonna be fighter ranger. It's fighter ranger. Darn you! You give him all the easy ones. Just I get two. I get two. Hunter. I'm, very, I'm very smart. <laughs> okay, JB, this is an easy one. Uh-huh. Spell sword. Oh, that's a uh, fighter mage. Fighter mage. You got it. See, Cash, and this is what it feels like to have an easy one. Finally, Cash, weapon master. Oh gosh. Weapon I know master. It. Weapon master. There's only one combination left. Got to be fighter rogue. Nope. Fighter rogue was shadow blade. There's one combination left and it is the pure class. Fighter fighter. Fighter it's fighter. Fighter fighter. Yeah. Okay. That makes plenty of sense. That's the weapon okay. master. So I'm not even mad at Steven on that one. That now, apparently the only weapon you're going to be mastering is a blade because <laughs> every one it's of true. these things referred to either a sword or a blade. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I assume the fighter can have like other stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I know that there's interesting. Not a lot of uh, information out there and all of it is subject to change. But I have to assume that you will be able to have different kinds of weapons for the fighter. Are we talking just blades here no let's yeah let, let's dive into that could because you have to be able like you would have to be able to use like like a morning star or a club or a mace, mace yeah. or an axe. right oh yeah well, i mean an axe is a blade but yeah 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 i say pretty much I anything do. with a blade on it yeah, but if I'm swinging around a big morning star, I mean, that's pretty far from a blade. I don't know if 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 you can have a club. Can you have a club fighter? You know, you can do anything stick. you want in something <laughs> like this. <laughs> uh, well, I'm currently going through it. You know, what's Let's weird is as a this is kind of off topic, but as a warrior in Warcraft, you can pick up the transmog for a staff. Like, How does that work? So I'm like, if we're like, are we gonna do that kind of stretch in ashes? Like, is, is are they gonna be able to just use everything, including staff? Like, I'm um, granted it's probably on the wiki, but yeah, this is one of those things where I feel like it's not on. It it might not be on the wiki, but I feel like people have asked this question before with regards to weapon types for um, fighters and things like that, and just generally in the game. Um, this is unfortunately one of these times when the three of us know less than the people that are watching the show and the people watching the show just go crazy. And they <laughs> let us know in the comments. How do you guys not know this? Like, look, we're learning this as, as we go along as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I want, I want the fighter to be able to use all sorts of different things, particularly blunt force weapons. I think that yeah. that just screams fighter, right? Like yeah. you should be able to go flying in with a giant stick and just bash everything because you're usually wearing heavy armor and you want to be close. Um, so, uh, yeah, some of the people in, in the chat, Blatt said that there's uh, weapon skill trees. So it does, it does give a bit of a, you know, false impression with all of those names. Um, but yeah, I'd be shocked if you couldn't at least have a club. <laughs> I think that'd be awesome. Players can select which weapon they wish to use as their primary weapon for basic attacks. And this is straight from Steven. We'll see if this uh, if this answers the question. Our approach for weapons within Ashes of Creation is that weapons are not just stat sticks. 
They have different feels, as was demonstrated in both melee weapon examples with the great sword and the daggers, as well as now with the longbow and the shortbow. These changes can be pacing, they can be speed, they can be critical rates, they can be critical damage, they can be base damage values, <clears throat> they can be separate effects, like the longbow has a long charge and blah, 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 blah. The idea For is sure. because each weapon type has an associated weapon tree for progression. So there you go. We almost want each of these weapon groups to feel distinct in the way that they play because that because of that, it touches a lot of different aspects of a combat for each. There you go. So there you go. Yeah, there's going to be different ones. So just because they're, you know, that it, it sounds like they're only going to be able to get swords like that just it just didn't sound correct. Yeah. So what do you think of uh, what he said there, JB, about weapons, not just being stat sticks? I mean, I like that. Like, I, I really do. I, I do um, for all the probably deserved frustration that new world gets or receives from <laughs> people talking about the MMO space. Uh, one thing that new world did really well, I feel was it really, it really made you feel the weapon, the, an the animations and the timing and the way everything like you just felt it, it felt unique, you know, totally different from using a two handed sword versus the flail in that game. I mean, like it just felt different. And a lot of that, you know, a lot of that, again, goes back to animations and the fluidity of those, whether they're faster or slower, slower, making you feel like, you know, especially at certain points, if the weapon's heavier, like it just really brought that across. And I, I think that that is kind of where my head goes with this. It, it's more than a stat stick. It has to be something that you feel that you love. Like you, whenever you play an MMO and you pick up that weapon, I'm seeing people in, in here from ESO, you know, in chat and um, from other games as well. And and I do distinctly remember in ESO, you know, like there was a major difference between running two daggers versus, you know, one giant two-hander, you know? And so it just felt different. And I think that that's truthfully what it comes down to. Like, what do you resonate with? Like, what really, what really feels good? Like, and you'll know because you'll pick it up and just be like, oh, wow. <laughs> Whoa. <Yeah. laughs> so... I like that a lot. I, I like the idea that, that things feel different like that. Um, Cash, you got 30 seconds on this? I do. Who wants Who wants me to go over the uh, list of weapons that you're going to be able to use in Ashes? Hit me with it. Axe is one-handed too. <laughs> Bows, clubs, daggers, hammers, lancers, mace, lances, maces, orbs, pole arms, halberds, scepters, shields, spears, spellbooks, staves, swords, rapiers, wands. <gasps> What happened? I think I blacked out for a second. The Did two I hear that you're not orbs in use. there? <laughs> you heard orbs. <laughs> Lances? Yeah. Did I hear a niner in there somewhere? <laughs> um, <laughs> following weapon types are not equipable by players in Ashes of Creation, and that is crossbows. Don't care because they're stupid. And mm -hmm. gentlemen, this sucks. Was is part of Apocalypse. Club? It was part of Ashes of Creation Apocalypse and is no longer available in the game. Potion launchers, which has been a big topic of conversation. Potion launchers. In the past. I'm yeah. really glad that's gone. I'm not. Would have been super cool for a rogue specializing in poison. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I feel like oh. then you'd have to go into the whole, like, the steampunky kind of thing. And I know he's not a big fan of that for the Vision for Ashes. No. Yeah. I, I suppose yeah. you're all, I suppose you're right, but it's still we don't have to get into this, but it's just alchemy mixed with a launcher. Put some right? just spr sprinkle some on the end of your lance. There you go. That thing. Yeah. <laughs> How about my arrows? Spears. I'm gonna sprinkle some poison on my arrows. Yeah. Squatch Bigfoot in chat says, I want a trident. I want that too. I want to stab a guy with a yeah, trident. I feel a little surprised that trident wasn't on that list. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, you killed a man with a trident. You should probably lay, lay low for a while. That's true. <laughs> the, the law enforcement is probably looking for you. You're probably wanted for murder. In a safe house? Uh, okay, so uh, speaking of laying low, this is the ultimate laying low. And uh, this came from a stream that I was doing. We had an interesting question, and it was about server merges okay and um there was uh, there was conversation a lot of people have asked you know about us and the show and everything like that and and we've said repeatedly that we're we're in this thing for the long haul and one of the one of the things with the long haul is that 
when a game starts out with an MMO that starts out, we have done this many, 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 many times. Okay. The game is a big deal. Almost every game is a big deal. If we've gone this far with it right off launch, right? People are excited about the game. There's a lot of hype. It goes, goes straight up, right? Almost all the games do that. And then there is a honeymoon period, sometimes long, sometimes short. And then there is a decline. They all do this, right? During this time, it is difficult because the company has to expand really fast to put servers together so that people can actually play. And then they have to contract those servers to keep that gameplay experience optimal. So the question is about that particular situation. When you have to merge servers, how do you do it in Ashes of Creation? Okay, do you wipe the map? Do you wipe the players? Do you wipe the experience? Do you straight transfer with everything on it? How do you do this? I'm gonna go to JB first on this one. JB, how do you merge a server in Ashes of Creation? That's a great question. Before I answer that, Stakeno just joined us here in chat with all his people. Brother, welcome in. So good to see you, dude. So good to see you. Um, okay, so I've been thinking a lot about this leading up to the show. And I think that when you have something like server merges and ashes of creation, which is like the game's wildly complicated already with the systems that are in play. So like, it's not just easy as, okay, we're going to take B and move it over to C, boom, we're done. All right. To me, it's like, here's my thoughts on this. And I'd really be intrigued to see what chat has to say as well. So when I'm thinking like, okay, how would you do server merges? Because you have people that are mayors, you have nodes that are built up, right? Like this, this is an issue right off the bat, all that time investment, no matter what, ultimately people are going to lose things when this happens. So I thought, okay, what if the per the people who are, let's just say over the same node on each server, uh, when they merge, that specific node goes into a state of quote unquote conflict and dependent upon whatever that node type is. So we'll just say military because we know like you fight for that. Those two people who those two guilds or whatever it is, th those are the ones who duke it out and like the ultimate it, and the, whoever wins keeps it, you know, or vice versa. If it's, if it's the, I believe it's divinity, a uh, divine, I'm sorry. Um, node, like that's where you vote. I think, um, or is that the PVE? I'm, I'm not sure. Or maybe it's a scientific one where you vote like a democracy. Well, in that that's case, the scientific that's the scientific. scientific. Okay. So in that case, to me, my head was, okay, well, then that guild votes and that server that's coming over would vote against the other person. You know what I mean? So it's just like, it keeps it local, but it's the same time. It still involves both servers. I still feel like it'd be messy no matter what, but I don't know. <laughs> it's complicated, like, you know, right? like, like, how do you fix that? <laughs> you start talking yourself in circles and you're like, oh, 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 uh oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Cash, what do you think? Um, I'm actually, I'm typing notes because <clears throat> my mind is, is rolling like crazy right now on how this could actually be done. And I don't know if my ideas are, are going to be considered like wall of crazy type of ideas, but I think that they could work. Some uh, some of the ideas that I have, I think, are a little bit more simplistic in theory. And it just requires the same transparency that Intrepid has been showing us all along. So let me explain. The one thing I do not want to happen is what happened in New World. And with larger player populations in the servers for Ashes of Creation, I don't see it being as bad. But at launch and then during their... Uh, subsequent expansion, New World shit the bed bad when it came to the bottom line. You, if you were in the wrong place, the wrong time, if you were just a little bit late, you were not able to play with your friends. That is the ultimate nut kick when you have server merges. You log in, your server no longer exists, and now it's telling you you have to choose another server. You have no idea where to go. When this happens with Ashes of Creation, folks, because this will happen, exactly how Jibs explained it earlier, where, and Sonny, you touched on it too, where you have super hype for the game, 
and then it starts to it starts to wane off that it starts to plateau out and then you start to have that inevitable drop every mmo has it doesn't mean the mmo is bad doesn't mean the mmo is good you don't see the lines go, continue to go up 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 and up they go up they plateau they drop that's just how it works with brand new mmos okay so when that does happen with ashes and we start to see what the actual population of the game for the long term is going to be you will have server merges the only thing that I'm asking Intrepid to do is let people know how you're going to do it. If we choose, say Loreforge is going to be on server A, server A ends up being a merge server, okay? You don't know which servers are going to merge, but when they are, you let people know. The population of this server is coming down. This is going to be a merge server. This is the server that you are going to merge to. Allow us time to plan. Allow us time to let our guildmates know. Allow us time to have a strategy going into it, okay? So like I'm saying, if server A and B are going to merge into C, let us know on a certain date what those servers are going to be. A and B, you're merging into the Riverlands server. Now we know where we're going. We know what date it's going to happen. And we know when our players need to be ready to make the move. Okay. Or when it's, when it's going to happen. So just be transparent with it. The second thing is tell people how it's going to happen. The one thing people don't want to hear is that all the work that they've put in for three, four or six months into their node is going to be wiped. Nobody wants to hear that everything is going to go back down to base level um, when the servers merge or that we are going to have to be subject to whatever that server was going into. When it merges, regardless of whether or not the folks on that server have already done a lot of work, the top two guilds, based on stats, based on the things that they've done on their server, going into the, nurse, the new server, the top guilds in that particular node get put into a state of war to compete for that, for control of that node. Whoa. Yes, it's crazy. It's nuts. But it at least gives people a fighting chance. It lets them be able to plan. And it makes things <clears throat> a little more risk versus reward. Rather Ooh. than just wiping everything clean and saying, yeah, sorry about all that stuff. We'll put your vouchers and stuff back in your bank. Yeah. But yeah, your freehold that you spent three months grinding and your mayorship is gone what do you think okay so let me ask you you both this where do you think the the more of the i'm just gonna use the word rage for a lack of a better term where do you think the rage would come from in regards to something like that wiping the server clean upon a merge or letting two guilds just go at it and you're not chosen so, to be a part of that kind of thing. So I'll answer a bit of that when I, um, and then I'm going to tell you kind of like what my idea was, which is absolutely plagiarized by the collective thought of the stream that I was doing when this question was asked. So uh, <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to give anybody the false impression that I came up with this myself, but it was, uh, I, I cannot possibly remember who came up with it. And then we sort of fleshed it out and it was just a brilliant idea. The rage comes from having something and have it being taken away from you. And especially with MMOs, you feel like you have taken your free time, the time that you had away from the office, away from, you know, whatever, girlfriend, boyfriend, family, stuff like that. Like you, this was your time and you spent it and you got these things. And then somebody's like, oh, sorry, through no fault of your own, this server looks like it's collapsing around you. So guess what? Everything you've done is now gone you're gonna have to go into somebody else's world where they already have a foothold and they already have the stuff <laughs> and you're just gonna be absorbed into this meat grinder now and uh yeah good luck right so nobody wants that um a lot of people said that the only way to do this is to like nuke it all start from zero right and i understand that that's that's a very clean way of doing it it's not terribly satisfying to anybody because it's kind of like you're taking everybody's basketball and uh, deflating the air out of it but it is clean right so i guess there's an argument for that here's the best suggestion that i had through the entire stream and this this is absolutely brilliant the suggestion was okay <laughs> servers are going to merge 
You got two servers, they're gonna merge. You got two completely different maps with completely different nodes, with completely different metropolises. All these guilds, they're established, they got freeholds everywhere. They inherently cannot exist together. So what you do is this. The day that the servers are gonna merge, you say three days, five days, whatever, before this, you go, the Harbingers are coming, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Harbingers are coming. Now everybody transitions from being a like a an MMO game player. And the, for the next three days, you're basically monster coins. Okay. You are now trying to destroy Vera on your server. Huh. And the uh -huh. server that destroys the most Vera <laughs> ends up <laughs> having their like node positions and their metropolises be the ones that rise out of the ashes on this thing. So <laughs> you wow. completely flip the coin on it and say, look, both your servers are going down. Let's see who can do it better. <laughs> wow, now like, that's wall of crazy. That that's is wall so of crazy. wall of crazy and I loved it so much. It was like an absolute blast of an idea. People might even be excited for server merges if you could do something like that. There's a lot of problems with this, right? You got names, you've got like guild names, you've got stuff like that. It just is so, so very difficult. But I think that would be a brilliant solution to something like this. Somebody's got to win this fight, right? Maybe it's a high pop server, maybe it's a low pop server, whatever. That's boring. No, I want I want Harbingers to come down and I want all hell to break loose on this server. And we're going to see <laughs> who can make a bigger mess out of it. Uh, welcome to Ashes Royale. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, that's funny. We actually do have some official information, at least through the wiki, on uh, server merges cache. Do you have that in front of you? I do. It, it, this was actually kind of funny to to see what we thought would be good ideas, and then what actually is <laughs> what actually is going to happen. I think it's pretty fantastic. So anyway, um, this is straight from the wiki. The developers intend to carefully manage server populations via the use of character creation throttles to avoid the need to merge servers only servers that share the same time zone will be merged together the server with the lower population or the weaker server will be merged into the server with a higher population or stronger server players from the weaker server will be provided the opportunity to change their character names during the merger there are two options for player owned land and property depending on the difference in the size of the two servers option one for equal size servers, property ownership will be reset for both servers, requiring all players to reestablish property ownership when the merge is complete, which is way worse than I wanted to do. That is a full Oof. nut kick to everybody. <laughs> Just yep. like, sorry, we're merging. You have to re-earn. Uh, the second option there would be for merges into a stronger server. Only the players coming from the weaker server will be required to establish property ownership following the merge. And then Stephen, direct quote from him, part of the equation of essentially watching to make sure that we don't overpopulate the server selection, but at the same time, making sure that there's not a queue system in place that so long it's detrimental to the concurrency of the player's will to play, so to speak. It's a tough balancing act. And he is right yeah. from yeah. the side of mechanics to the side of the player who's experienced the crap that it is when you don't get to play with your friends and you're sitting in a 30,000 person queue, which yeah. I know is just inflated numbers because of the system, but New Worlds was just terrible. That was awesome. It was a huge reason we left the, we left that game. Yeah. I'll never forget that. <laughs> we'll never forget that. We got all hyped for the expansion release, couldn't get in, had to move to another server, and by the end of the week, we're just like, we're done. Like it's, we were flat pissed we were off done. that they just didn't plan well. At you all. know, the irony of it is that we expected them to plan well, despite yeah. quite literally everything they've ever shown us. Yeah, <laughs> they've literally shown us their hand. How many times? Yep. Yeah, it's so many yeah. times we we're like, I think they got it this time <laughs> based on my <laughs> zero times I've seen them do it. <laughs> it's uh, Amazon. They have to have learned. Oh, no, not so they, much. They have not learned. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. No, I mean, just in, in summary on that one, uh, 
it's an awful situation, right? And and the example that I have uh, is the player that comes in and they just happen to be in a server where Asmongold parachutes in with all of his people and they just blow up the server and then Asmongold, you know, finds another flavor of the week or whatever and goes and does that and the whole thing leaves and now you're like looking around like john travolta and you're just like what <laughs> you know <laughs> where did everyone go oh. <laughs> and, and the server merges and everything you've done is gone and you had zero fault in this none not a single bit but you are caught up in this just just windmill of awful stuff and now you are definitely the weaker server. And so you're going to get punished out of it. And it's just so unfair. You know, it's, it's tough. one of those things that MMO players deal with. And it's just so unfair. And we all get it. And nobody likes it. But, you know, at least having a plan is is better than not having a plan, I guess. You know, it seems like he's got a yeah. decent plan. It does. It, 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 it seems like already that they they know that it's a possibility. They know that it's a probability and there's already something in place. They're already, they're already thinking about it, um, which is another one of the reasons why I truly, truly believe that Intrepid is going to absolutely crush this um, this launch. And I don't mean ruin it. I mean that like in old guy terms, like crush meaning good. Crush good. <laughs> we already established they're, we're not very good at this. <laughs> yeah, I'm not very good at this podcasting thing. Words are hard. <laughs> but I really think they're going to do very, very well. Um, yeah. I think they've they've have learned and have set in they're going to have set in place a lot of uh remedies for things that other MMOs have done in the past. They're gonna have plans. Okay. So yeah. I, I mean, even if as long as it's you know, the transparency is maintained there, you know, like with communication with the community. I think that goes a long way, a long way yeah. with with your community base when you can just be transparent, like, hey, here's where we're at with this. You got something better? If not, this is where we're headed. You know, we'd love some feedback on it, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, I just appreciate dev transparency, you know, not to be a dead horse, but we've seen it, for instance, from things like New World when there was none whatsoever and it was a dumpster fire upon release. And so it's just... You know, it's things like that that you really want to be able to avoid. And I, I'm I'm in agreement, Cash. I think they will. I think they will for sure. But anyway, well, we'll ev- out. We'll, we will. <laughs> we absolutely, there will be a day. We'll be there, we'll be there for it. <laughs> uh, one day we'll be there. One day. Uh, well, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. This was Lore Forge. We hope you enjoyed yourself here. And uh, if you did, let us know how we're doing. Please take a moment. Let us know whether it's a podcast app, comments below on YouTube, whatever it is, whatever fits your fancy, however you watched or listened. Let us know. What do you think of the show? We appreciate you. You can always call us 516-875-1776. And of course, you can email us loreforgedhq at gmail.com. Sonny. You can go to loreforged.com to find links to all of our Ashes of Creation content and a merch store. And I will say this, I just got a text from my captain and he is wearing a 3xl sleepy owl tavern hoodie in the picture that is is so cool he is a gigantic human being that used to be a college football lineman and uh to see him in a sleepy owl tavern hoodie is just oh it's just so good it's just spectacular so That's at loreforged.com. You can go to YouTube where we are doing all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, That is youtube.com slash at loreforged. I'll be looking forward to Cash's new lore video. We have some food stuff on there, which is somehow Ashes of Creation uh, related. And then JB is doing a series on... uh, he did the Nun Forgotten. Is the Nun Forgotten, right? Yep. The Nun Forgotten. Yep. Um, it was sort of a, a pack, but he took the lore from it, and it's super cool. So go check out some of that stuff. I guarantee you that you will find unique things um, that not a lot of other podcasters are doing there. Um, Twitch. You're watching Twitch right now, probably. Um, that is twitch.tv slash loreforgedhq, and I'm streaming in the afternoons, and the guys are going to be streaming, and we're all streaming it's happening it's it's a good time um patreon finally uh that is where you can get all of our content early including the state of the owl episodes for our patrons and that is patreon.com slash loreforged hq cash 
Friends, join our Discord community. We have a lot of really, really cool people in our Discord community, and they're jumping in and playing games with us. It's been a blast. I want to give a very hearty and warm family welcome to some new members this week. Rand118, the Surgeon General, Camp Priest, Shavacado, Adsman, Antidote, and Apache. You, uh, you okay there, boss? Stroke out I had there? to mute and clear my throat because I think a demon was climbing out of my trachea. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Friends, if you are still on Twitter, which we are waning at this point. Waning. Twitter and waning X. is a kind way of putting that, too. <laughs> you want to talk about transparency, Friends? We can't stand X. Yeah. <laughs> it's just weird. Wing it's up. weird anymore. Uh, um, falling out of there. a helicopter without a parachute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a helicopter anyway. It just it's it's defying gravity. It should not be right. in the air, yeah. but it is. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, we are literally there because uh, that's where Ashes of Creation is, and every once in a while we have a good conversation. But it's not as fun as the next social media I'm going to talk about. Anyway, if you're still on X, you want to follow us there. We still are posting there and we're at Loreforged HQ on X, but we are trying out Instagram and it's, it's been pretty fun because I think we're doing a little more personal things, like just a little, it's pictures and stuff. So it's a little bit more, who are we type stuff, which is really, really fun. And that's kind of what we crave anyway, is that engagement with our community. So if you're on the gram, you can follow us at Loreforged HQ for that trial run, which I think is probably going to stick. There you go. Okay. Right on. Uh, Chad is wanting us to be on tic the TikToks. Oh, I don't Oof. think that's probably going to be a thing. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I don't know if you guys heard the first five minutes of the show <laughs> while we tried to use words. No that cap. Were Dog. No cap. Yeah. And drip and slay girl boss bussin bussin i learned i, I can't something can be bussin bussin. i feel the physically like i'm cringing right now i tried to drop I, a triple bussin no good no nope. i still don't <laughs> i don't understand what the bustin bustin means no bueno <laughs> oh i here's a good one glizzy do you need glizzy glizzy is a hot dog now why they determined what? to make a cool word for hot dog i kid you not glizzy hot dog so i'm at a hockey game and uh, my captain, the same guy that got the shirt, I order a hot dog and he goes, got yourself a glizzy because we have this like 20 year old girl on our shift and she uses all this language. And I'm like, son of a gun, this moment actually happened or I am holding a hot dog. I haven't eaten a hot dog in like 20 years. And here we are, glizzy. Huh? Yeah. We're not going to okay. make it onto TikTok. No, we no, not we're not. Seated. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, nope, they would lead us alive. Yeah, they would. Oh, well, anyway, friends, thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for hanging out. Everyone here at Lower Force Live, we love you long time. Nope, can't say that. We nope. love you. Have a great week. It's a habit. I stopped. I caught myself. No Good. yellow flag needed. It's a green progress. flag. Don't look for it. Stop looking for it. You're still looking for it. We love you. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Red flag your ass. <laughs> Peace, love, and honeybees. Here. Red card you. Pink card. <laughs> Safe travels adventures. <laughs>